There are two techniques that can be utilized for taking periapical radiographs. The paralleling technique and the bisecting angle technique. The paralleling technique is most used because it produces the most accurate and representative images of the teeth and surrounding structures. The bisecting angle technique is considered a secondary or alternate technique when paralleling technique cannot be accomplished due to intraoral anatomy or other patient factors. Bisecting angle technique produces images with inherent distortion because the buccal and lingual aspects of the teeth at alveolar bone are not projected evenly. This distortion must be taken into consideration when interpreting the radiographs for caries and alveolar bone loss. Let's talk about the paralleling technique now. The paralleling technique is the preferred method for making intraoral radiographs. This technique aims to minimize distortion by placing the image receptor parallel to the long axis of the tooth and directs the central X-ray beam perpendicular to both the long axis of the tooth and the receptor. Now, how do we get this parallel orientation? To achieve this parallel orientation, the operator often must position the image receptor towards the middle of the oral cavity, away from the teeth. Even though this position makes the teeth and image receptor parallel, it increases the object to receptor distance and results in some image magnification and geometric unsharpness. To compensate for this magnification and unsharpness, we use a long open-ended aiming cylinder, also called as a cone, to increase the source to object distance. This cone directs only the central and parallel rays of the beam to the image receptor and teeth and reduces image magnification, while also increasing image sharpness. Typically, the paralleling technique is done using ringed instruments that help the operator in achieving the correct object to receptor relationship. There are a variety of ringed instruments commercially available with designs for all three types of intraoral receptors. Moving on, let's discuss the bisecting angle technique. The bisecting angle technique is based on Sisinski's rule of isometry or the geometry of equilateral triangles. This rule states that two triangles are equal if they share a common side and two equal angles. How is this law applicable to radiographs? A tooth and its projected image will be equal in length if the X-ray beam is directed at a right angle to the common side or bisecting plane that divides the triangle formed by the long axis of the teeth and the intraoral film into two equal halves or equilateral triangles. However, when the image receptor is in this position, it is not parallel to the long axis of the teeth. This arrangement inherently causes distortion. Although the projected length of a tooth is correct, these images display a distorted image of the position of alveolar crest with respect to the cemento enamel junction of a tooth. Another important point to remember about this technique is the exact vertical angulation for each arch and type of tooth. Have a look at this table to see the values. There are many commercially available film holders designed for the bisecting angle technique. Snap Array is one of the most commonly used film holders. Alright, that's it for this video. To recap, there are two techniques that can be utilized for taking periapical radiographs, the paralleling technique and the bisecting angle technique. The paralleling technique is most used because it produces the most accurate and representative images of the teeth and surrounding structures. This technique aims to minimize distortion by placing the image receptor parallel to the long axis of the tooth and directs the central X-ray beam perpendicular to both the long axis of the tooth and the receptor. To achieve this parallel orientation, the operator often must position the image receptor towards the middle of the oral cavity away from the teeth. Even though this position makes the teeth and the image receptor parallel, it increases the object to receptor distance and results in some image magnification and geometric unsharpness. To compensate for this magnification and unsharpness, we use a long open-ended aiming cylinder, also called as a cone, to increase the source to object distance. The bisecting angle technique is based on Sisinski's rule of isometry or the geometry of equilateral triangles. This rule states that two triangles are equal if they share a common side and two equal angles. A tooth and its projected image will be equal in length if the X-ray beam is directed at a right angle to the common side or bisecting plane that divides the triangle formed by the long axis of the teeth and the intraoral film into two equal halves or equilateral triangles. However, when the image receptor is in this position, it is not parallel to the long axis of the teeth. This arrangement inherently causes distortion.